Okay, well, what I am going to do for the next 15 minutes is just give you a little update on what products we have at Metacoustics that are new for um, 2016. Some are brand new and some are slightly new. Um, and some you may have seen, some you may not have seen. These are the areas that we've been working on in the last few years. Uh, we have a new infant screening device. One of the problems has been that people have been complaining for decades that are in the business of screening uh, newborn infants that the techniques that they have, uh, mainly their ABR techniques, are uh, too expensive and take way too long, too hard to do and too time consuming. So we've been working on a, a new screener that is uh, at least, in some cases, 10 times faster than uh, the Natus and other products that have been out there. Grayson Stadler has introduced a new middle ear analyzer to replace the Tim Star. It's called the Tim Star Pro. Uh, Vivo Sonic, which has become pretty popular, especially in non sedated pediatric uh, ABRs, has introduced a new system called the Integrity Gen 2. Gen 2 for Generation 2, and it is a two-channel clinical unit that does everything, anything that a biologic or anything like, else, anything like that does. Micromedical has a new VNG system that includes, um, that includes VHIT, and uh, AudioScan has a new Verifit called the Verifit 2. So it's pretty exciting with all these new products around this year. Let me just tell you a little bit about this new infant screening system. Uh, this uses a very innovative ways of stimulating the patient, uses a chirp instead of a click, and it also uses an innovative way of detecting the response. Instead of using a statistical analysis of the ABR response or uh, the type of techniques that Natus and Biologic and others have been using, it uses ASSR technique. So between using the chirp, which gives you a lot larger response in a much smaller amount of time of averaging, and the new de uh, detection technique, the typical test time that we've found on infants that are going to hear and are quiet during the test ones that are normal and quiet, is about 19 seconds. So 19 seconds is um, uh, a remarkable test time for ABR. It's 19 seconds per ear. Sometimes it can take 30 seconds, sometimes 45 seconds, but these are typical times much faster than any product that we saw in the past and a very high pass rate. Uh, and you can either use these type of ear cups or, of course, you can use inserts. And um, there is even a version of this product that uses no disposables at all, uh, none. No, no uh, ear tips, no electrodes, nothing like that. Yeah. So um, we have hospitals interested in that because they've spent, been spending tens of thousands of dollars a year on disposables for infant hearing screening. The interacoustics Titan has been around for several years, and there's an option on that called ABRIS, which stands for uh, ABR infant screening, very simply. And that screener is using the exact same techniques as that MAKO MB11. It's using a chirp instead of a click for stimulus, and the detection technique is ASSR instead of ABR. Uh, of course, the calibration is the same at 35 dB NH NHL. But it's, uh, it has that same advantage of a test time that's very, very often, most of the time, between about 19 seconds and maybe uh, 35 seconds. Uh, the, maximum, the maximum time, test time, is three minutes per ear. So between 20 seconds and three minutes, depending on the situation with the patient. It also has Bayesian weighting in it, so it does very well with uh, noise immunity, too physiological noise from the patient. That so. the baby and stuff like that, you know, the yeah, baby baby moving and things like that, of course, in any ABR screener is is a problem. 
though this does use Bayesian rate weighting, which helps that compared to um, no type of filtration system. Yeah. So um, this is like throwback Thursday here. You know you're old when you've worked on every single one of these. You've worked on every single one of these, right? Yeah. Well, I have. I started in audio, the audiometric equipment business in 1974. And so you see in 75, the um, GSI, uh, the 1723 came out, 1723. And I was very excited in 1985 when the um, GSI 33 came out. And um, in fact, I remember receiving it at my apartment and putting it on the coffee table. And I'm all excited that this brand new technology, finally the first system that I ever saw that doesn't have an XY plotter in it. It actually had a little thermal printer built into it. And then uh, some of the technology went obsolete. In fact, you couldn't get those little picture tubes, little green picture tubes anymore. So they had to move up to a flat screen dis display. And so the TempStar came out uh, right around the year 2000. And now the TempStar is gone. And the new one is the TempStar Pro. We've been waiting the, uh, on this for some time. And we've been working with GSI as one of the clinical test sites. We had a system for over a year uh, in development at Children's Hospital in Birmingham. And one of the great things about this is its start algorithm. We asked audiologists, what's the most important thing to you about a tympanometer or a middle ear analyzer? And they said the absolute most important thing that kills everything else is the ease of start, the ease of getting a seal and starting, especially when the patient is not 100% cooperative. So one of the things about this is it has a, a, an extremely fast and easy start algorithm. You can start and get a tympanogram on almost anybody with very little effort. Um, and so um, that, that to me is one of the exciting things about it because that's the biggest thing that people complain about, can't get a seal. It has a GSI look and feel. Somebody that's used a TempStar before will find this very, very easy to use with little or no instruction. Uh, it's very familiar. It's extremely easy to operate extremely fast. Uh, and it has a touch screen on it, so it's very easy to move between one function and another. This is what it looks like. Very modern looking. Very nice, bright color display. And the panel looks familiar. It has the types of uh, things that we expect on there to go from the screening mode to the tympanometry mode, the reflex mode, eustachian tube testing mode, and then a mode that you would have advanced tests in, like reflex decay and uh, reflex latency, uh, things like that. The screening mode is, ex is the fastest that I've seen of any of them. Uh, the start is almost instant, very easy to get a seal, and then if you decide to screen reflexes, it will zip right through finding a threshold at uh, up to four frequencies, ipsy or contra, and the screen looks like this. Has a uh, diagnostic tympanometry mode like this, um, and you can either have it on auto start as soon as it gets the seal, so you don't have to push the start button, or uh, you can have it where you can get it seated in the ear and then push the start button. And there's a start button on the panel of the piece of equipment, and there's one on the probe module, so you can remotely start it if you wanted to as well. The reflex mode, you can do them manually, of course, ipsy and contra, or you can do them with an auto, an auto threshold. So it will seek the threshold uh, itself. And most of our users are using that auto threshold function because it, it works very, very well. You get the the same threshold that you would get if you did it manually. Once you're done with it, it looks like this. Here they've done four frequencies, 500, 1,000, 2,000, and 4,000, ipsilateral and contralateral. And within just a few seconds, you have, you have the results. Very clean. That's a little close-up of it. And you have reflex decay, of course. And your station tube function for intact eardrums like this, and for perforated eardrums like this. 
You can get summary data like this. You can print out to a printer. You can write your reports right on it just by connecting a, uh, a keyboard to it. And of course, you can send your results into, um, into electronic medical records. It has some advanced features, like it measures Y, B, and G. I don't know anybody who does that, but it still does that. It has high-frequency tympanometry, 1,000 hertz is built in. And of course, reflex latency is built into that. Broadband tympanometry is a feature that they will add next year, as well as um, autoacoustic emissions. Those are options that they'll, they'll add next year to it. If you have the TimpStar Pro, I mean the AudioStar Pro for an audiometer, that replaced the GSI-61, then you can get a combination report that would have audiometry and tympanometry on the same page. Uh, and, uh, and that is a custom report as well, so you can make it look like the handheld reports that you, you used to use. And these can print directly from these instruments, or they can print from the software. This is what the AudioStar Pro looks like, in case you haven't seen one of those. That's very popular. We have over 50 of them installed already uh, just in the last uh, 18 months uh, in the Atlanta, Atlanta and Birmingham area. And it's PC compatible, it's NOAA compatible, it's EMR compatible, it has built-in wave files for speech. Almost nobody is doing live voice anymore once they have a product in this generation. There's a special uh, stimulus for, for pediatric testing, pediatric noise. Uh, it has uh, customizable reports. You can operate it remotely. Almost all of our users have a uh, flat screen and just a, a small keyboard or a, or a uh, wireless mouse in their booth, and they can operate the entire thing from within the booth. So they can operate it externally outside the booth like you normally would, but if you have to do play audiometry or something in the booth, you can go in the booth and operate it completely from within there. So the remote operation is, is good. And of course, there's a, a high frequency option to um, 20,000 hertz as well.